It's Winter Picks Dinner West Coast Edition. It's impossible tomorrow. Hey everyone, we are at Disneyland Resort playing Winter Picks Dinner. This is the game where we have a multi-course meal around the theme parks, but it's all decided in a very serious competitive game of rock, paper, scissors. Super serious. You ready? I'm going to lose every round. Yeah, we'll see what happens, but yeah, probably. In this series, we are going to have a multi-course meal around Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. That's right, we're taking over two parks since they are literally walking distance. Each course will be decided by a serious game of rock, paper, scissors, and whoever wins decides where we get that course. But you need to be strategic in your decisions because once a location has been chosen, you cannot eat there anymore. Let's get into it. Drinks. Up first, drinks, yeah? I'm thirsty girl. <sighs> on shoot. Yeah. yeah. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Again. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. <laughs> I didn't even lose to one of you. <laughs> I lost to both. Ow! Ow! Okay, here we are. Ready? Yeah. All right, on shoot. Yeah. Rock, rock paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Nice, you get to pick first. I'm mad, but that's okay. At least I didn't lose, lose. <laughs> I feel good. First California round in the bag. Okay, drinks. Um, we're obviously going to Disney California Adventure because Disneyland is a dry park outside of Oga's and Club 33 and we weirdly don't have reservations to either. So we could go to PIM in Avengers Campus. I do like their beer selection. We could go to the Magic Key Pass Holder Lounge. I've never been up there, a new Magic Key Holder. That'd be fun. We could go to that brew cart down by the boardwalk. But I think, I think I have a decision. I molded over and ultimately I'm in Disney California Adventure. I want to get a drink in one of my favorite Disneyland's ever, Avengers Campus. Walking through the land, we already saw Captain America, Black Widow, T'Challa, and Spider-Man. Plus, I love the craft beer selection over at the Pym Tasting Lab, so this is my choice for our first round. The bit over at Pym Test Kitchen, which is where you can get the food in this land, is that things are often too big or too small because they've been hit by the Pym particles. And then over here at the Pym Tasting Lab, which is the bar section of the Pym Test Kitchen, it's got kind of a science feel to it. Certain cocktails come in beakers and there's some kind of like potiony, I shouldn't say potiony, it's not Doctor Strange. There's some science kind of concoction magic behind it. I shouldn't say magic either. I don't know why I'm thinking about Dr. Strange so much. Pim Tasting Lab isn't a full bar. Like you're not gonna be able to go up and order something like a Jack and Coke. They do have a couple of beer cocktails. They also have a couple of draft cocktails. And then they have a variety of craft beers, which is what I enjoy as a beer fan, especially because they rotate them out pretty regularly. Uh, I was in Disneyland a few months ago and they already have new beers that they didn't have before. There's also a couple of non-alcoholic specialties. There's the Pim Particle Punch. Sometimes you can get um, some small mini cans of soda as well. And there's also like a snack mix they sell here, but it's nothing I would would uh, get over other snacks in this land or in DCA in general. Got our bevies. Highly recommend mobile ordering at this location because it gets very busy and they were quite quick with the mobile order. And now it's time to toast around one. I am trying the Cali Squeeze by Slow Brewing Company. It's a blood orange Hefeweizen. Well, that's just delightful. Definitely has that orange flavor, definitely has that weedy flavor that you get with the Hefeweizen. Very refreshing. It's a little bit cooler today, but it'd be really good on a hot summer day. Think like a better blue moon, and that's what this is. I am trying the new Belgian brewing company, Voodoo Ranger Juicy Force. Hazy IPA. A Juicy Force? Or Juice Force. The Juice Force. <laughs> For an IPA. It's not super hoppy. It's actually pretty delicate. On the back end, there's the standard bitterness that you'd get from a beer that's actually had those hops brewed in in order to size a preservative, right? So overall pretty tasty if you're an IPA fan or a light, uh, light beer fan. This will probably satisfy both of you. And if you want to try an IPA, this is the way to do it. I am having the Pim Popping Particle Punch, which is the mocktail you will find. It is a carbonated pineapple hurricane with a bit of grenadine and what they would call flavor bursts and what any other human would call pop rocks. It's 
sweet, a little tangy. I think most of my pop rocks have popped at this point, but it had that good pop rock sound when we got it. And on my first couple of sips, I had it on the tongue. So it's just a fun mocktail. If you're trying to avoid a, a water or a soda, trying to get something that's a little bit more like themed, it's not a bad option. Feeling good after our drinks here at Pim. We saw Shang-Chi, we saw Loki. I met Captain America, Sam Captain America, who was walking around. And now it's time for appetizers. Let's go. All right, everybody, ready? Yeah. On shoot. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> we literally could not write this better. How? It's okay, man. <laughs> I just don't understand. <laughs> At this point, it's mathematically almost impossible that you've lost this many rounds. How do you feel? Bad. <laughs> do you have a 0% win rate on rock, paper, scissors? No. There was one time where he won a trio round and eliminated me at Animal Kingdom and then lost to you. So, yes. <laughs> so, overall, yes. I'm trying to be nice. That's very Alan of you. All right. I take apps. So I want appetizers. There is a wealth of options. I think lamplight's probably out of the question, although they do have some nachos that I think are spectacular, or at least they look that way. Shawarma, Jolly Holiday has a great appetizer. Now listen, I understand. You might be saying to yourself, self, a full grilled cheese and soup is not an app. You're not me, it is to me. You know what? I think I have an idea. Life is a highway. There is a wealth of options for appetizers and frankly for entrees here in Disneyland. However, here in Cars Land, I'm actually gonna pause for a second. Can we just take a moment to acknowledge how absolutely stunning this land is at night with all of the fluorescent lights lighting up the entire area? It's gorgeous. I'm just processing. It's beautiful. Okay, I'm sorry, Let me, let's, let's rein it back in. I was thinking that we spent some time in Cars Land earlier and we saw the cozy cone motel area that has a number of cones with a variety of food offerings. Took a look at the menu, seemed interesting. Specifically the, uh, the bread cones sounded good, but ultimately I settled on going to Flo's V8 Cafe, which is a spin on a diner. So it is diner style food. And for me, as a person born and raised in the South, they had Flo's famous fried chicken. Now I know that might sound like an entree, but split amongst three people seems like an incredible appetizer before we dive into the part of your meal. From Flo's Diner, we have picked up Flo's famous fried chicken. It came with three pieces, which seems perfect for us as there are indeed three of us as a part of the ma'am. We also got a side of what looks to be steamed veggies and as well. one carrot. One carrot. Is steamed important. broccoli and carrot singular. <laughs> <laughs> and then mashed potatoes and a sawmill-esque gravy? Question mark? Now granted, I know it's not normal gravy because normal gravy is a dark brown. This is not dark brown. This is more light khaki. Uh, I am intrigued. Listen, if there's one thing, I'm expert at shades of gray and brown. One thing I will say, I'm surprised by how crispy the exterior of the chicken is. I'm also surprised by the level of moisture that is still in the chicken. And this is the breast. So typically the breast is the part I look forward to eating the least because it gets dry very easily. Is it the most most thing I've ever had? No, but it is pretty good. One thing I will knock it against is a bit on the salty side. But for crispy fried chicken, that's actually above like an, an above average rating in a theme park, not bad. Delicious fried chicken. Pretty good. For where we were, and for like the fact that I did not have a lot of faith in the fried chicken to begin with, to be real, I was pleasantly surprised. Plus, Flo's is really cute, just like this whole restless land. True. Very, very cute. I do have a suggestion, though. Okay. okay. One that almost guarantees I take an L. I don't, I don't follow. I think you both are incredible at this, and I'm excited to watch you duke it out. Would you be willing? to bet the entree portion of our winner picks dinner on web slingers. 
This feels like a pity pivot. <laughs> I mean, it is. It 100% is. Let's, let's not but I'm not, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. You know yeah. what I mean? Max like, does have the winning record at RPS Web Slingers, I so. might not be... That is very Allen to that offer is, a way yeah. for Max to win. I, I typically do okay on Web Slingers. I, I've got the winning record you here. Do. Yeah. All right. I'm, I I'm not bad at Web Slingers. Yeah. All right. Web Slingers for the entree course. Web Slingers for entree? Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, <clears throat> won't be me. No. Good Probably thing I booked not. us a lightning lane earlier. We are here now to duke it out on Web Slingers. This is the Spider-Man attraction in Avengers Campus. There's no height requirement, and it's a shooter-style ride similar to Toy Story Mania. However, instead of a pull-trigger gun, you use your arms and slang your webs like Spider-Man. There's tons of fun Easter eggs in the queue, and as a pro tip, try and hit the spiders that are different colors, because they are worth more points. I hope Max and Alan didn't hear me say that, because I am trying to win this battle. It all helps us develop really cool stuff, like um, like these spider bots, for example. Check it out, they have this really cool self-replicating feature. Because? Uh, this is awesome. And they're consuming everything in their path. Oh. They seem to be stuck in self-replication mode. If you could just handle that for me, please. On it. Contacting Mr. Stark. Don't call Mr. Stark! Don't worry, everyone. I got this. And the Web Slingers winner is... With over 300,000 points, I continue my reign as our resident Web Slinger. Good thing, because you can't play rock, paper, scissors very well. All it took was us to not play that one game, and, and suddenly I'm in competition. Finally, I get to choose something. But you know what? I had an idea. Maybe, even, even though it's my choice, I think I'll give choice. How about that? I am thinking we'll go to the future home of San Francisco. Ooh. Won't be around forever, am I right? We might as well go eat there. Entree time brings us to the Pacific Wharf area of Disney California Adventure and kind of a multi-option entree here. We're gonna show off a few different locations for our entree uh, because there are a lot of actually different eatery uh, options down here. All of them are quick service restaurants, all of them offering a different type of cuisine commonly found in California. Um, we have Lucky Fortune Cookery, we have our Cocina Cucamonga, and we will be going to the Pacific Wharf Cafe. All of us getting a different type of entree and we'll show it off once we've gotten it. I went to the Pacific Wharf Cafe and picked up this elote soup inside of a red bowl. Now Pacific Wharf Cafe specializes in soups inside of the sourdough bread bowls as well as some sandwiches and salads. On a night that's becoming more and more frigid, I wanted to go with the soup. Now I didn't want their traditional clam chowder because I wasn't feeling particularly clammy right now. Mostly for the seafood, not necessarily the temperature that is associated with clammy, but I'm excited about the elote, the corn soup. That soup's a warm hug. Good corn flavor. We have some masa in there as well that adds to the sort of heartiness of it. It's actually what it tastes like thickened the soup with a little bit of cheese, <clears throat> plenty of kernels of corn, and it's spiced well, which is something that worried me. All inside of a sourdough bread bowl, and I got butter for it. I'll be back. I went to the Lucky Fortune Cookery, which is fast casual Asian food. A little bit of everything. Uh, I got the spicy Szechuan chicken. Other options would have been things like pork ramen or a beef bulgogi burrito, which sounds, you know, super authentic. But we'll try this with a little bit of steamed rice and um, the sauteed vegetables. Maybe I should have gotten the ramen. Um, they say spicy Szechuan chicken. I guess there's a little bit of heat on this but mostly it just tastes like a tossed, fast, casual chicken. It's sort of what I expected, I suppose. And I went to the Cucina Cucamonga. Is that how you say it? Yes. Thank you. I went to the Cucina Cucamonga, which is the Tex-Mex, like Mexican fast casual. And I got the queso birria tacos, which are beef and cheese birria tacos. They've got the beef consomme. They've got a lime right here. They've got like a pepper salsa on here as well. I love Tex-Mex, and I am really hoping this does not disappoint. Mm-hmm. 
that is far better than any Mexican quick service I've had in Walt Disney World, except for the Epcot Mexico Pavilion, which is run by a third party. Definitely better than something like Pecos Bills. There's actually a little bit of spice in the salsa and in the beef consomme. The cheese is all melty and gooey. The taco shell's been fried, so it's got that nice crisp to it. The beef is moist and sauteed delicious. Tons of flavor. I'm actually impressed. I was a little worried about these, but these are really good. I'd get these again for sure. Okay, back to rock, paper, scissors. Perhaps your luck has changed. Yeah, I, I'm sure it has. Maybe you will be good at rock, paper, scissors now. You know, perhaps. It's dessert. You like sugar? I'm changing my strategy. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. I've learned. Dessert is on the line. Here we go. Yep. Ready, ready? ready? Yep. yep. Rock, rock, paper, paper scissors, scissors, shoot. Oh, my. I didn't just beat one of you, I beat you both. What Are you basking? Yeah. Are you reveling? Yeah. <laughs> Let's eat something sweet. Now, the problem is, is I finally have enacted control over this chaos. So I... As I finally have wrapped my grip around the plan. There's a lot of things I don't want to eat. Uh, I have dessert, but it's very cold outside, so go-tos like a Dole Whip or a Mickey Premium Bar are not going to be in. I could go a Binyals. I could go a confectionery uh, a bakery case treat. I think, regardless, we're going across the street. In a quick pit stop before we nab a dessert, I am not built for the temperatures here in the evenings in California, so I'm going to look for some form of additional layer here prior to us migrating to wherever Max would have us go. There is an entire errors collection that we have inside the other room, but I don't know if there's much better than a classic Disneyland long sleeve, which I can add under my current hoodie situation, uh, we might have found a winner. We don't have my size. We have asked. This is a nice option, and it certainly is in my size, so we're going to nab this before anybody else does. As promised, dessert requires a relocation. Luckily for us, these parks are quite close together, so we will be heading across the street to Disneyland. Welcome everyone to Disneyland. For the first time in the video, we are at the happiest place on earth, and I've decided that dessert should finish in an iconic way, I think. One of my favorite ways to finish my day visiting Disneyland is by getting a bit of a sweet treat out of a bakery case. Now, this is gonna give everyone a bit of options, a bit of choice. Yes, that's what you should hear. I am a kind and benevolent controller. I would not ever deem to ask people to eat one thing or another. No, even in victory, I give the benefit of choice. And I say you may have anything from this glass enclosure, for that is all that I ask. I look forward to eating my sweet treat. Perhaps you should join us. Go get a sweet treat out of your glass enclosure. Eat with us. Find a cookie or chocolate milk. Yeah, pause the video right now. <laughs> Go pause, pause the video right now. Go get your sweet treat of choice. Bring it back and then eat with us. Yeah. Do that. Sounds reasonable. Now, do that. Don't, now, come back, though. Yeah, don't leave. Don't leave. I don't. No. Do no I, you sound like you're not going to come back. Please come back. OK, we'll see you soon. Now, if you're looking for your bakery case option in Disneyland, find your way right up Main Street and just past the Penny Arcade, actually in the Penny Arcade building, you'll find the Candy Palace, which will feature all of your favorite bakery case treats and some that, uh, if you are a Walt Disney World goer, uh, are gonna be kind of unique to Disneyland. If I had to bet, I'm gonna bet that this one has her eyes on something more unique to Disneyland. They're actually making it right there. It's the churro toffee. We do not have this in Disney World, and it is so delicious. Yes, that's what I'm getting. 
How kind of me to allow so nice. choice, so kind. even in yes. control. Yes. Ah, kind of benevolent, we say. Here are our bakery case goodies. I did, in fact, as promised, get the churro toffee. I got a Rice Krispie treat, but it is peanut butter and chocolate, which I'm very excited about that combination. And I picked up the double chocolate chip cookie. Double the chocolate, double the fun. Rice Krispie has always been one of my just favorite bakery treats. It's my go-to when I go to the bakery case and a little peanut butter and chocolate only makes it better. It's a perfect flavor combination. That is a classic bakery cake cookie. I will tell you, it's gonna be a little bit more crumbly and bready than other cookies, but that's because it's double chocolate. So it's very, very rich. What they did to counteract that is they salted the top, which I think is a great touch because if you're gonna do anything to counteract the richness, add a little bit of saltiness, it's a pretty darn good cookie. I'm not mad at all about it. Good way to wrap up the evening. It's so sweet. It goes against everything I normally stand for, but it is so delicious. It's really rich toffee with that strong caramel flavor. And then it's like dipped in a little tiny bit of white chocolate just to make this churro cinnamon sugar stick to the top. It's incredibly, like I said, it's incredibly sweet, but it's not artificial sweet. You can tell that it's just like butter, sugar, cinnamon, chocolate. That's it. It's delicious. It's a Disneyland staple. Like I said, these aren't in the Disney World cases, so I like getting one when I'm here. And I like that at the bakeries, they give you a bag so you can put this in your bag and snack on it for a while. So I also love a bakery case treat. There's tons of fancier desserts around Disney parks, but sometimes you can't beat just a, something out of the case. All right, last round. Alutimo. To finish out this winter pick center, West Coast. Maybe, maybe, may, maybe it's changed. <laughs> maybe you're, the, the tides maybe have turned. the tides have turned. I hope that for you. Yeah. I hope yeah, that for I'm you. I'm ready. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Yep. Yeah, I'll shoot. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. What an odd... <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 now hold on. But... <laughs> oh, is that a draw? I think it I is. I think that's it's a, a draw. draw. I think that's a three-way draw. Wait, that's never happened. That's never happened. I think it's a three-way draw. We do it again. Yeah. We go again. Yep. Okay. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Let's go. The tides have turned. The tides have turned. I'm the new champ. Enjoy it while it lasts, pal. <laughs> I know you all are used to this uh, final drink category being a nightcap, but, um, you know, I don't partake. So I'm cold and I want hot cocoa. That's nice. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Now for our hot cocoa this evening, we've ordered a mobile order from the Stage Door Cafe. During the day, this is where you can pick up items such as chicken tenders, uh, a corn dog option outside the Little Red Wagon, fish and chips, another quick service option in Frontierland. But tonight, we need not for those things. I simply needed a close by place to get a warm beverage and the Sage Door will do just fine. Thank you for joining us for this Winter Picks Dinner where I finally got a win. Really happy for you. Really, proud of you, buddy. Really proud, proud of, you. of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Disneyland is open to midnight tonight, so we're going to take our hot cocoa and go cause a little chaos, ride some of our favorite rides before we head back home. In the meantime, be sure to like and subscribe if you are new, ring that notification bell, and follow us on all of our socials. We appreciate you. Bye. Cheers. It's been magical. Also, this is coffee. <laughs> it's true. Only two of us got hot cocoa. The secret's out. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew until right now. No one could have suspected this. All right, to toad. Oh, my fortune card.